morning. I am so delighted that this week we're going to be in conversation with Anthony Alderson, who is the director of the Pleasant Theatre Trust, in uh, which is a key partner to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, based in Edinburgh and also down in London. So this morning, good morning to you, Anthony. Thank you very much, and lovely to be here. Um, Anthony, it's you must be so glad when you saw the calendar change to 2023. 2022 must have been, you, we were re-emerging from this pandemic and it was a challenge, but what a great year you had. Oh, I I can't tell you how, so I've got through last year was, 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 was a feat in itself, actually. I mean, I, I, I am um, the most unbelievable number of challenges in doing it, but I have such a wonderful team of people that they really rose to it. And and I mean, a few a few casualties along the way, but actually we put on a festival and we did all right. Um, I mean, in 2020, we didn't have one at all. In 2021, it was tiny. And then 2022, we almost came back to sort of full steam. But this year, it really does feel like we're sort of back. We're back with a with a real program of fantastic work, and I'm really excited about it. But when you say you're not just doing one venue, you are doing three large, big central venues for the Fringe, with 27 venues across the three hubs. Yeah. And um, you put on near on, well, 260 shows, is it, this year, a day? Yeah, I know. It, <laughs> it's absolute madness. Um, but yes, the courtyard, the famous Pleasance Courtyard, which I think has become one of the most iconic sort of venues on the fringe, because it feels like it's been sort of carved out of old Edinburgh um, and it's cobbled and it's rather beautiful. And and um, I mean, it, it, it the rest of the year, it's a rather sort of tired looking car park, um, but it transforms into this absolute hub and we 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 took a, a sort of leaf out of sort of Walt Disney's book in a little way, which is that the moment you cross that threshold through the archway into the courtyard, you are given complete permission to be somewhere else. And it is the most it is I challenge anyone to not want to be there in August. It is the most extraordinary atmosphere. And and it's full of creative, brilliant, clever artists trying to, you know, find their way and put on great work. There's a great electricity to when you arrive there yeah. um, of theatre and everybody being there to enjoy theatre, uh, whether it's comedy or musicals. And you can really spend a day there. You, it's not, it, it, you have a, a saying, don't you? Spend a day at the Pleasance. Have a, have a Pleasant day. Have a Pleasant day. I, I think it's like, almost an American saying, you know. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it's wonderful, but I mean, there's places to eat. There's, it's, a, it's a wonderful environment that you can come in there. And, you know, it is a bit overwhelming sometimes trying to work out what to do, but the Pleasance will help you put your day together. Uh, absolutely. You, you turn up, I mean, you, we, we have shows from 10 o'clock in the morning. And they run right the way through till three o'clock in the afternoon, in the three o'clock in the following morning, um, across three sites. But if you come to the Pleasance Courtyard, there's a great big sort of signpost that stands in the middle of the courtyard, um, which has become an iconic place for people to meet. And there's a, you know, what we put on is, I suppose, a microcosm of the entire festival. I mean, the festival this year will be over 3,000 shows. So we are under sort of 10% of it. But what I think we have managed to achieve over what is now 39 years we've been going um, is to find a way of kind of really, really maintaining a, a real quality about it. We're quite different in the way we operate because we actually share the risk with all the companies who we put on. So there is a share of box office, um, the deal being you, you, you bring the show and we will build the venues and they're all temporary. There's one venue there the rest of the year, which is operated by Edinburgh University. Um, but we build all these temporary venues. So we invest in the infrastructure of the festival and then companies bring their shows and we share the box office. Um, but it does mean that the quality of the shows is key, absolutely key to us. It's, it's something we spend, we have a programming team of five now, um, I think maybe even six at different times of the year. 
and we go really far and wide to go and find this work. Um, and we've become sort of world renowned now for spotting the greatest new talent. And what I love about this festival the most is it is a voyage of discovery for everybody. From the artist's point of view, you get to, if you're brand new to the theater, you get to perform right alongside, you know, companies who are well established and you're being judged in the same limelight as they are. Um, your career can change overnight. Um, we find, the, I, I think, the most extraordinary new writing. Um, and this year, there seems to be a real explosion of new musicals. Um, there's been a bit of a bit of a lull in in musicals over the years, but actually this year, it's really kind of um, taken off, and actually there's a real scene developing about, around new musicals. Well, um, can we talk about a, a few of the things you're excited about? Maybe if we're um, as you brought musicals up first, let's delve in there. Um, it, you, what are the sort of top three, top five that you have as of things that are coming? Um, I think, well, talking of musicals, first of all, we run a, um, a funding scheme called the Charlie Hartill Fund, which has been going for, I think, 17, gosh, even longer, 18 years now, I think. Um, and what we do is we do a showcase in London, our theatre in London. We, we, we had about 100 applications this year, and we then pick one show that we are going to fully fund. Well, this year the quality was so big and so good that we um, we picked two. Um, one is a musical called Public, which is, um, it's sort of folk music, um, country folk music. I mean, really, really cleverly composed. The singing and the songs are wonderful. Um, and it's about five people trapped in a gender neutral toilet for an hour as they try and work out all the issues that surround um, the sort of culture wars that we're having um, across all of our societies at the moment to do with trans, to do with all of those identities and, and so on, and all the difficulties with it and, and, and what comes with cancel culture and so on. So it's a really, it's a wonderful way and it's funny, it's charming, it's really, really, really fun. Um, and very clever. Um, so that's one piece. We're doing a lovely piece from a company um, from Glasgow, which is sort of the history of Edinburgh and its musical called Bampots. And, and it's a brilliant. And that was this the is other another. Winner. This is this has also come through the Charlie Hartill Fund, um, and it's the history of Scotland or everything that you would find, all the sort of cliches of Scotland sort of squished into one very, very funny musical show. And it's a, for anyone visiting Scotland for the first time, it's a brilliant place to start because it just, it's irreverent and gorgeous and, and just lovely. And they're students and they're, it's just brilliant. Really funny, really funny. Where are they students from? Um, from all over. Um, from all over Scotland, they're a company who've come together, but I think predominantly Glasgow, um, but they've come from all over, all over Scotland. Um, so a fantastic piece, piece of work. Um, another piece, another musical piece, we're doing Tony Blair, the rock opera, um, which is the political life of um, Tony Blair, written by a very famous comic in this country called Harry Hill. Um, who has put together this rock opera and is in one of our biggest spaces. And I think it's going to be great. I haven't seen it yet. It's, it's touring the UK at the moment and getting brilliant reviews. Um, so I'm very, very excited to see that, see that coming. Right. Um, we're doing, um, we hope it's coming. It's not completely 100% confirmed yet. Um, a musical, it's a pop musical um, set sort of around the 1980s, 1990 sort of musical. Um, sort of genre, but about Robert Burns. Um, and it brings the poetry of Robert Burns to the sort of pop generation. Um, and it's about making Burns, well, it's sort of turning Burns back into what he was, which was a rock star. Um, <laughs> he was our country's greatest and first ever rock star. So and that's one, the thing about Burns is he cuts across everything. And, yeah. he, it, it, that, and so that to do a contemporary rock opera of his work, Sounds fantastic, and yeah. uh, that I think will be excellent. So fingers crossed that you that that gets confirmed. 
And, I think uh, I think it'll be great. I think it's a it's really fun and really accessible and and makes his poetry really come to life. And um, what is the comedy of operas? Uh, the comedy of operas. It's a Spanish company um, who have put together the sort of first. It 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 takes the some of the characters, the sort of cliches of grand opera. Um, and it sets these characters in a completely sung, um, I suppose, jukebox opera. Um, so if you could imagine all of your favourite arias and duets all in one show, um, and it's just fantastic. The singing is incredible. They are really, really, really talented opera singers. Absolutely some of the best. It's a cast of five. And it's about those lovely sort of wavering love stories that happen in opera between you know, one couple and another, and then they swap over and then someone murders someone else. And then, I mean, it just is fantastic. And it's very funny. Um, but there are moments when you get sort of modern music breaking out of it. And their point is, you know, that actually an awful lot of modern music has come or has been influenced by opera, exactly. by these extraordinary, um, extraordinary composers. But it's just an hour and a half of joy where you get to hear, you know, everything from Mozart, Puccini, right the way through the kind of opera canon. It's just fabulous fun. Um, and it's very gentle. So for anybody who is scared of or feels that opera is not for them, this is definitely a show for them because it is, it's just really accessible and really, really gorgeous. And then, so, and last year when I had the fortune to be um, with you for a few days, um, there was a wonderful amount of comedy going on. Yeah. Well, we've, we've, we've been, we've been famous for our comedy program for many years. I mean, we have over 150 um, comedy shows, um, stand-up comedy, sketch comedy, musical comedy, comedy plays. Um, it's a very big part of our programme. And it's always a fine balance to get the comedy and the and the theatre absolutely right. But there's any number of fantastic um, um, comedians coming and an awful lot of them new. I mean, there's a lot of people that people just won't have heard of. But what I love about Edinburgh, this is really the sort of pedestal upon which you can really you know, build your career. A lot of comedy, um, particularly in the US, I think, and and um, across the globe is you, you get sets where you get multiple comedians playing a sort of lineup show. Edinburgh is really the only place, one of the only places in the world where in a festival setting, you can do a full hour um, as a comedian. So it really is about cutting your teeth in that, you know, you really get to hone your art and develop your, your skill. Um, and we've been promoting comedy right since the 1980s and, and have become very, very famous for really spotting, you know, the really the very best of new talent. And I think that, I mean, where I would start is our very own Comedy Reserve, which is, again, funded through our Charlie Hartill Fund. Uh, we normally bring four new comedians to the, to the festival. Um, Jack Whitehall is one of, one of its alumni. Brett Goldstein, who has written um, Ted Lasso and uh, Shrinking, which is the big series on Apple at the moment. He came through the Charlie Hartill Fund as a young comic. And, you know, they are coming and cutting their teeth. And because this, the quality of new comics is so high, this year we're actually bringing two comedy reserves and doing um, and bringing eight, eight new comedians. Um, and we've been doing that for, for 18 years now. Um, and the, the, the standard is fantastic. And then you always have apart from the comedy and the music and everything you have some usually some outstanding key shows last year the ukrainian ballet was so fantastic and moving um so this year um would that be dark noon yeah i think that's probably our biggest show and it's very unusual for us because it's set almost in it's set in traverse there are 200 seats on stage um, this vast stage, which is 16 metres by 10 metres, and it's a great big sort of sand pit, if you like. And it is the story of North America told through the eyes of seven South Africans. Um, and it starts with the pilgrims and the arrival of the pilgrims in the east coast of America. And you very quickly move into the race for land. 
um, and that spread. The whole thing is contrived a bit like a 1940s movie set. It looks like a movie set. And through the course of this play, they build on stage the sort of skeleton of what could be described as a sort of cliche um, frontier Western town that you would see in any sort of good cowboy film. Um, and what's really at its heart is about the violence of North America and the, and the proliferation of violence across America and that that violence still exists. And it's, you know, everything is solved with a gun. That, that idea that, you know, that, that very brutal lifestyle, you know, that frontier, all those people who pushed out into the West, the brutality of that lifestyle. But act, and it takes you right the way through to the 1930s. At one point, they build a railway line right the way through the middle of the set. They build a church. They build, the, you see the founding of the Bank of America and the rise of capitalism and the rise of, of the sort of avarice nature of, 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 of the, the capitalist sort of ideal, if you like. But then at the very end, the last sort of five minutes, it comes to a sort of crashing halt. And you then understand that actually these people are talking about how Europe has spread violence across so much of the world, because actually what they're really mirroring is their own lives um, through their experiences of apartheid and what happened in South Africa and what continues to happen in South Africa. So we see this extraordinary um, story of North America, but really what it mirrors is, is something very similar that's happened in other parts of the world, which has really been proliferated by by European um, by European nations, whether that's the UK and the imperial sort of you know frontiers of 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 the British, the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the Germans, it was coming out of all of a, a, all of Europe, um, and it's a really really phenomenal piece of work. It's extremely um, explosive and and really dynamic and a very different form of theatre because. There are five cameras on stage. A lot of it is filmed. You're seeing it on screens. You're seeing some of it, uh, you know, you're sitting in one seat and then suddenly they build a church in front of you. And so you might have to move or you might have to look at, watch it through the screen. It's a really fascinating piece of work. And it's I would describe it as, as where theatre is now moving, which is event theatre. This is a real event um, and it's an extraordinary piece of work. Directed by a Danish, a Danish director and a um, a South African co-director. It was devised by the seven actors. Um, I mean, really, what they set out to do when they started their devising process was tell the story of South Africa. But actually, what they ended up doing was telling the story of America because it seemed to mirror so perfectly so much of what had happened across Southern Africa. Have they yet um, performed it anywhere, or is it in previews anywhere? They they performed it in France. Um, I saw it in Paris in an extraordinary theatre in the outskirts of, of Paris. In fact, the theatre was closed for refurbishment, and they turned their scenery barn, it's this great big shed on the complex where they would build scenery, and they turned it, as only the French could do, in this absolutely beautiful theatre they'd built out of this old barn and I saw it there. Remarkable piece of theater, really, really amazing. And I love Edinburgh for this, which is you can find these really extraordinary, different, challenging, very moving um, and truly original pieces of art. And I think this is one, I think this is one of these pieces that, that people will be talking about for years to come. I could go on talking to you for hours. Uh, and I really could, but I need to ask you if you will come back and continue the conversation in a few weeks' time with us. I would and absolutely love to. That would be wonderful. I'm I'm so excited. Any uh, and the big thing for everybody to understand is that tickets are incredibly reasonable, which yeah. is wonderful. You're keeping them that way. Average cost is fifteen pounds. I think, you know what, I think across the fringe, the average may even be lower than that. I mean, I think it's £12. So you really can. What I love about it is that you put your foot in the puddle 
you take a bit of a risk with your first show. You then stand around in the courtyard at the Pleasance or sit around one of those picnic tables and just start conversations. And people, they love talking about what they've seen, what they're going to see. Everybody's looking for the next best thing. Um, and it's just, it's a voyage of adventure. And if you come for three days or four days and see three shows a day, you will not be disappointed. You will see something, I guarantee it, that will change your life. No, it's uh, absolutely. And we're so excited to be able to get the inside scoop from you. And so to speaking in a few weeks time again, and tickets are now on sale. Tickets are on sale, um, www.pleasance.co.uk. Well, we're, we're be in touch. Fabulous. Well, thank to you very much. You. Lovely to see you again. Bye. Bye. And now I'm delighted to introduce everyone to Ghostlight, which is a wonderful service that is going to help us all in our efforts to navigate the fringe, the festival that and all that is happening in Edinburgh during August. Chris Crouch, along with his uh, business partner, Molly Morris, have set up this great company. They are great lovers of theatre, but they're here to help navigate and enjoy the festival to the maximum. And so they will be leaving the States and, and debunking and getting themselves over to Edinburgh for the month of August. So, Chris, good morning. And morning. thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> this week, we've been talk, catching up with the Pleasants, who um, put on about 10% of the, sh the festival Fringe shows. And we'll be ca catching up with the Fringe to talk about some of their international works that have just been announced. But to navigate all this, that needs a bit of help. And um, I'm on the phone to friends and saying, what have you heard? What's good? Uh, because I'm looking at all of this and you you can get overwhelmed. So to talk to us a little bit about how you can help the chaos. Sure, yeah. For, so start off, uh, Molly and I met doing theater together about two decades ago. And we've been family to each other ever since. She took me to my first Fringe Festival. I think that was 12 or 13 years ago for me. She'd already been going for several years herself. And it became immediately an annual must do for me. Yeah. It, Molly and I always talk about how the festival resets our clocks every year. It, it re-sparks my creativity. It, it kind of wakes me back up to the world of theater and art and people and and, uh, but it is it is massive. The festival is massive. It's over 3,000 shows spread across the entire heart of Edinburgh. And it, it can be a little much. So what Molly and I start, it actually happened organically. People started coming to us, friends, producer friends, theater investors that wanted to go, but had never gone because they found it too daunting a task. And so we started off helping friends go, family go. And it sort of just developed into this company that we are so lucky to have and so grateful that our passions have turned into us assisting other people to enjoy this festival that we've been in love with for so long and we think everyone should go well it's it's also navigating not just the shows mm -hmm. where they are correct how to have dinner how to get in and out because right. the reality is the city is the festival correct and you aren't driving a car necessarily no, everywhere. I don't recommend it, actually. But what, 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 what we found is, like, I think we're both based here in New York. We spend as much time as, in Edinburgh as we are able. Uh, we've already been over a few times this year. We're going again in July to see the Who in concert at the castle. Uh, but what we found is, we, what we tend to do is when a client comes to us, we do a consultation to see how much they want, where their focus would be, because there are, within the festival, there are festivals because there's really theater and there's comedy and there's dance and physical theater. And, and there are higher end arts like the opera and the ballet and the international festival. And, and we, what we do is we find out first what you're looking for. And then we curate bespoke travel based on your expectations. We also like to sprinkle in a little surprise and delight as well, but we can take it. We've taken everything from, we have hold your hand from hotel check-in to hotel check-out we do all of it. We book all of your shows. We make all your dinner reservations at the best places. Or we do a lighter version of it where you have a lot more freedom to sort of explore. One of the things that we sort of demystify, in New York City, if a, fe if a festival exists, even like Tribeca, which is a huge festival, 
gets absorbed by the city. If you're not in the industry, you don't even know what's happening. In Edinburgh, you can't miss this festival. If you're there, it, it envelops the entirety of the town. And, and there's something so singularly focused about it. There's something really special about being in a place where everybody is there for the same experience. And the, so, and the city council, everybody wants to make the experience wonderful. I think the right. way they transform George Street in the center yeah, so, so that great. you've got it's a walking street yeah. so that you can you know there's the check-ins for the plays and everything in the middle there for the right. rooms and things and then all the ways that you can have and all the the extra food vendors that are mm -hmm. out it it's is so fun fantastic really fantastic um, so i i found that it's good to get a few sort of central shows sorted so you've got your anchors yeah and what we like to do is use uh the venue as the anchor so we like to feature because we think it's it is the producer the venues and the organizations like pleasance that are that is that make the fringe so extraordinary it's the work that they do individually that sort of all when it all comes together it makes this thing it's like Brigadoon, the, the mist yeah. parts and the fringe descends for four weeks and then disappears again. And it's and it's not magic that it happens. It feels like magic, but it only feels like magic because of all the work that they're doing to make to make it happen. So what we tend to do with our curation is we anchor in a location and then we make sure that your day is focused around that venue or that that uh, producer. Uh, so that so that you get a genuine taste of what they are what they are offering. And so you leave with an appreciation for the Pleasance and you leave with an appreciation for the Travers Theater so that you, you don't feel like you just went through a, a tornado. You actually leave feeling like you know the town and you could get yourself around it. And so we kind of demystified the overwhelm because otherwise my first year I booked a show and it got out and I was like, well, the next one's in 10 minutes. What I didn't know is it was a 45 minute walk away. So that's kind of the, that's, those are the errors that we make sure people don't make so that you don't I waste a minute of the festival. And I went to the wrong courtyard last year for the pleasant also, yeah. one over by the Hotel de Vin, and there's another right the way over the other side. And the yeah. only way to do it is to hoof it. That's right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> um, so this year, it really feels like it was amazing what they pulled together the last two years, mid-pandemic, post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. This year, there, there's over 2,600 shows, aren't there, already? Over three thousand now, uh, 3, yeah, past three thousand, yeah, yeah. It's exciting so, to see. So, what are you excited about? So, if you were to give us your top three, um, oh. or, or, or why don't we do it this way? One comic <laughs> you're really excited by, an international that's coming in because there's some great okay. national it seems, and then also um, maybe a more serious one or a music, maybe a do do a music. Okay. I would say comedy wise, I'm going to lean. It's music. I don't even know if you'd classify him as a comic, but Daniel Kitson is one of the best storytellers I've ever seen in my life. He, he can weave a tale like nobody. He, he is a comic. I've seen him do stand up, but he also does theater and he writes shows. And, and right now he has a show on this summer in the roundabout at Summer Hall. Right. which is going to be a very hot ticket. If it's not already sold out, it will be soon. So as soon as it went on sale, Molly and I grabbed tickets for that show for all of our clients this summer, just to make sure that nobody misses it. I would recommend looking for Daniel. I think the show is called First Thing. It's called First Thing Work in Progress is the name of the show. And that's on at the Summer Hall Roundabout. Highly recommend. Um, for the International Festival, I would say, I would say Throne is going to be something to see. It's actually, it's being, it's a National Theatre of Scotland show uh, that's being put on by the Travers for the International Festival. So it's sort of a marriage of three extraordinary organizations. And, and this international, to clarify, yes. is how the Fringe began 75 years ago. That's right. And yeah. because it's this formal, more formal side to everything, right. there were all these artists who couldn't, weren't invited to the international who right. then said we want to do something and uh, then here emerged the fringe correct 
So, it, but it, it's it, wonderful it, to have these big, larger segments that are done by such people as uh, the the National Theatre of Scotland. The National Theatre of Scotland has done. You know, I mean, my favorite thing, we're actually taking one of our, a group of our clients this summer uh, to Glasgow for a day trip to do a tour of Rock Villa, which is the National Theatre of Scotland sort of headquarters. But, you know, their entire theory, their whole premise is built around theater without walls. And there's no, because, because they're the National Theatre, there's no grand house. They believe that every theater is a theater for the National Theatre of Scotland if they're in it. So their their whole philosophy around bringing theater to the people i just i think is so magical it's only in scotland right only there would somebody be so clever and so generous with their art but this i think throne is going to be a really exciting uh piece of theater this summer and oh and what was the other you asked for a well, comedy uh, international do, why don't we do music there okay there's an uh there's a show, I'm gonna say a few, if I may. Okay. There's one I highly recommend. It was um, a show that was on last year called Bloody L. It's a one woman, uh, self-written, um, self-performed gig theater. So it's music, it's storytelling, but it, her and her voice alone is worth the ticket price. But the story that she tells, um, her sort of coming of age story, you, if she does it alone, but by the time it's done, you would, if you close your eyes, you'd swear there were 15 characters in the show because you really come to know and love all these people that she was surrounded with. But the music and the theater in that one, I would highly recommend. Um, I would also say, oh man, there's so much good theater. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up his last name. <laughs> That's my thing. I know. <laughs> um, there's so much. I'm, I'm a little overwhelmed. I wish I, I should have put together a good list. Oh, I would also say uh, this is not uh, any of those things. It's not comedy, music, or international, but Stuntman is going to be something pretty extraordinary. It's called Stuntman. It's on at, I believe it's also on at Summer Hall this summer. It is a uh, an exploration of masculinity and violence, sort of how it's, a, it's an exploration of toxic masculinity and how men grapple with violence in the world and how, how I don't want to say too much, but it's, it's an intense physical theater. So it's pretty wild as I've understood it. And we have a pretty uh, close friend in the production team of that that we're excited to see. Oh, a comedy and music. Um, yes. Kathy and Stella solve a murder. It was on last summer. If you're into Britbox, or if you like whodunits and musical theater, this show is going places. It ran last year in a sellout run and it has now transferred to Underbelly. It's gonna be in the Purple Cow at Underbelly. Yeah. Uh, and it's a great venue, really fun. And this yeah. show is, it is a canon. Like it starts, it's straight through 90 minutes, an absolute good time. It's being produced by Francesca Moody. And, and the thing about the Fringe is, as we've said, the whole town is the fringe it and is they the fringe. welcome all of us that's correct they, they're so excited by it and you've got to go down to the hay market you've got to go and walk you've got to make sure you have your flat shoes with you you've got that's to right. be ready um, <laughs> don't forget your umbrella no i was going to say you've got to be ready for it to be 80 degrees mm -hmm. and ready for it to be 40. that's right because it goes flying it goes around everywhere we always we always provide a uh, a pack list all right come. and we even do a day pack list like if you're going to put a bag on for the day here's everything we think should be in it and it's in layers is always at the top because it could be 40 degrees outside you could go into a venue that is 80 degrees so you just got to be ready be flexible and, and also if you go to the the tattoo which is really worth trying to do um you're going to get cold at night correct you're going to get cold yeah, so and, it goes and it, up and down but does. the and theater the child, yeah, the theater. It's where you go. It's where we go. And the tattoo is extraordinary. I, I'll go again this summer. Um, and they have everything from 40, 50 pound tickets all the way up to 600 American for the Royal Gallery. Yeah. Same show. Uh, it's the same show, same magic. But, you know, it, but I always say like, and, and here's a little tip. Anyone looking to book a ticket to the tattoo, stay on the south side of the stadium. Uh, the wind tends to blow north towards the water. So if it does get windy and rainy, you're better shot on the south side to not get wet and winded, so. <laughs> I have to say that we are so glad to be working with you. 
if you um anybody listening is an ASF member or friend, we do have a special code which you can receive with your membership. Um and um also then helps us. And we're um if you call us, we're happy to share that with you as well. Um, if you've lost it. Um and but we're delighted to have you as an advisor to us and to help us because in these next few weeks we're going to be checking back in and yeah, great. looking forward to hearing more. Well, thank you. And we're very proud members and sponsors of the uh, American Scottish Foundation. So, and like like Camilla said, if anyone reaches out and lets us know that they're coming from this organization, we have built in um a benefit that goes back to the organization. So you would both get an experience of the festival and also support this organization back home uh, that you're so grateful for. We're, we're just, um, I think it's, a, um, a, and if you're not going over in August, start planning for next year. We have, we've already, we're half booked up for 2024 already. And we're also very excited um, that people are excited about the festival again. Molly and I went in 2021 when there were only 75 shows on in the post COVID. And, and it's just so thrilling to see this, the town come alive again with the festival and to see people, we're so hungry for, our, for each other. We're so hungry for theater and art. And I, this festival provides something that you can talk about it, talk about it, read about it, read about it. But until you see it, until you experience it, it's just hard to know. It's hard well, to really thank know. Thank you, Christopher, for spending time with us today. Say hello. Thank you so morning. much. I will do. She's traveling and she said she's not here, but I'll give her your best. And we will catch up with you in the next couple of weeks. I look forward to it. About all that's going on as you plan and get us all organized for August. Great. Take thank care. you so much. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you for joining us today and a thank you to the Pleasant Theatre and Ghostlight Tours. So much will be going on in Edinburgh during August with the festivals, not only of theatre and fringe, but uh, art and books and all the different ones that will be happening. And in the coming weeks, over the 11 different disciplines that are covered, we will be talking to many different people. Catch up on past episodes of Scots in Us by visiting your favourite podcast platform, and looking for our library, The Scots in Us, with over 100 episodes now for you to delve into. Visit our website, americanscottishfoundation.org, to stay up to date on all that we are doing. And do visit us again as we have another episode of The Scots in Us on the first and third Mondays of the month. Until then. <laughs>